Hey everyone, this is my Nexon EV which has done over 26,000 kilometers and I have taken it to almost every place where I would take my diesel cars to, be it the highways, the mountains, the lakes or beaches. So this is a long term EV car ownership video in which I will talk about the different aspects of driving an EV in India, like how the home charging setup works, how to charge when on long trips, how to plan for long trips maintenance and servicing and most importantly about range anxiety so this video will basically help you understand if an ev is the right option for you and what are the benefits challenges that you'll face while driving an ev so let's get started so with respect to the home charging setup the installation was done free for me by tata and at that time they provided 10 meters of free cable Along with that, I also got this charging box which has a lock on it and I think if you're staying in apartments, this locking mechanism is very important. You also get this charging cable along with the car which has a 16 amperes plug on one side and the other side has a connector that will connect to your car's charging port. So this is a slow charger that you know it's a 3 kilowatt charger and uh, it will charge the car slowly um, so for my car it takes around 8 to 9 hours to completely charge from zero and this is the kind of port that's there on the car and you can plug the gun in here and once the power supply is turned on the main control unit has some status lights that will show that the charging has begun Apart from the control unit, the charging information is also shown inside the car on the dashboard where it will show how much the car is charged and approximately, you know, how much more time it will take to charge it to 100%. So after a while here, you can see that the charging is almost done. It's also showing the approximate real time range that I will get with the current battery charging percentage and once it's completely charged the charging gets automatically cut off as well now let's talk about the fast charging experience via public chargers and you know this has been a mixed experience for me because not every time things go well so let's discuss this in detail now firstly finding chargers on the go is quite easy as there's a very good app called PlugShare and this also has an Android auto integration. So you know you can search chargers on the go on the car's infotainment system itself and using this you can either search via location or find nearby chargers and once you find something you can use the navigation feature in this that will get you the directions to the charger. So this part is, I would say, very easy. And after that comes the slightly tricky bit. So let's see what happens next. Now, in some cases, you'll end up at fast chargers set up at petrol pumps. And if the petrol pump has a convenience store, it's you know easy to spend time. Otherwise, it becomes a bit difficult to pass time while your car is charging. And it becomes even more challenging if you have your family with you because they all need to step out while the car is getting charged. And then the question is like, what to do while the car is getting charged? So that's like a tricky thing, I would say. Another small issue is with all these different apps that you need to install. So basically every company that has their chargers set up on the road have their own mobile app and since you do not have much choice while doing road trips you'll end up installing a lot of different apps and at times when you're like at a very new location and you're installing the app for the very first time it gets a bit frustrating because you have that sign up page and then at times there is mobile otp authentication so if the network on your phone is not good you won't get the otp you won't be able to use the app uh, and you'll have to install it on somebody else's phone. So that's a bit tricky at times. It doesn't happen 95% uh, of the time, but there is a chance of that happening. And some of these apps have, like I would say 5% of these apps have their own wallet integration. So they'll ask you to install a specific uh, wallet application and then you can add funds into the charging app. So. I think that's a bit of a problem that's not the case with all the apps but 95% uh, of the apps support 
multiple payment options like upi net banking credit card etc but uh, in some apps you have to install an additional wallet app so that's a bit of a problem and uh, lastly to sum it up when you install four different apps you'll be adding money into uh, all of these four apps and let's say that you pay only half of what you've added then the rest of the money sits in the app until you use the charger the next time so i think there should be some unified app which will list down all these providers and you know you should be able to use it that way so i don't know if somebody is working on an improvement but uh, that's an improvement area for these charging apps now the charging guns at fast chargers are different than your home charging gun so at most places you'll find these ccs type 2 guns which are universally compatible with all new ev cars and once you get the charger plugged in and the charging started via the app the car gets charged pretty quickly now this again depends on how much fast charging your car supports for example if you are using a 60 kilowatt charger and your car supports only 24 kilowatts of fast charging then that's the only power it will consume so if someone is driving a car like a kia ev6 that supports up to 350 kilowatts fast charging and if the charger is that fast uh, the car will get charged like pleasingly fast but in general for normal users who will be buying average evs it would take something around 50 minutes to one hour for the car to get completely charged from 10 percent battery level and about the cost for charging so this again differs from company to company at some chargers it will be as cheap as rupees 16 per kilowatt and at some it's as expensive as rupees 24 per kilowatt so to give you an average value if you charge your car via fast chargers only then the running cost would be around three to four rupees per kilometer and if you're charging it at home uh, it will go down to like one or one and a half rupee per kilometer and if you have a solar setup at home then there's nothing like it now let me talk a little bit about the driving experience which in my opinion is far more superior than any ic car and trust me on this once you buy an ev you'll probably never go back to a conventional fuel car now the first reason for this is region braking which is extremely helpful when you're going downhill and 90% of the time if you plan and release your accelerator properly you will not have to use the brakes so basically how this works is as soon as you lift your feet from the accelerator it will slow down the car depending on the region level that you have selected and while doing it it also recharges the battery another thing that blows my mind is the no noise factor as there's no engine noise the cabin is very quiet and you will not have to shout while talking to your fellow passengers which you know you have to do in diesel cars mostly so even when comparing it to a petrol car the the evs are quite silent and this feels very peaceful while driving the car now let's talk about range anxiety which is the most common topic on ev forums and in my two years of using this car there have been two instances, two to three instances where I got this range anxiety feeling. So with EVs, you need to plan your trip properly and check for charging stations before you head out on a long trip. And you need to, you know, plan your brakes accordingly. So this, I don't know, I think it's a positive thing because it makes you a better trip planner. But uh, in general, if the battery percentage goes below 10%, it is going to make you anxious until you get to the next charging station. So I think as long as you plan properly, it's not going to be a problem. And the car that I have is not an extended range one. Uh, it's the basic one. So for me, I need to plan carefully. But if you're getting an EV which has 350 kilometers plus of range, then I think this planning part can be a little here and there but uh, if you have a low range EV then you definitely need to plan better. And for an adventure seeker like me when I take my car outdoors uh, I need to plan carefully and have enough range so that you know even if there is some blockage in the road 
I should be able to make back to the nearest charging station. So it could be like a tree has fallen down on the road or if there's a landslide. I need to make sure that, you know, there's enough range for me to go back to a different charging station. So that's a consideration if you plan to take your EV outdoors. Now about the maintenance and servicing, this part has also been a mixed experience for me. And here you can see in the engine bay, things are less complicated as compared to a normal ICE car. And there's just an electric motor, some coolants and other electrical modules. So definitely there's less maintenance compared to an ICE car. And it's very rare that you'll face any major issues. However, what I felt is a little bit off is the servicing cost because it's not what I had expected. So for minor servicing, it cost me 2448 rupees, which is absolutely good. But for the major servicing, it cost me around 5824 rupees. So which in my opinion is slightly on the higher side. Um, I don't know. I mean, they, they had to change something called as a trans axle oil, which was like the, the major contributor in the service bill for, uh, for the major servicing. So somehow I felt that this is on the higher side because, you know, we have a thinking that this is an EV car and there's no oil change involved. So this was not the typical engine oil as such but some other oil i'm not sure what exactly it is in terms of mechanical uh, terms but yeah it was some kind of an oil that needed replacement and here you can see that you know in this bill uh, it is the highest contributor so at a 15k interval i had to shell out like 6000 rupees approximately and that i felt is slightly on the higher side Apart from that, regularly, there are absolutely no issues at all. So on that part, I feel EVs are absolutely great. So given all the pros and cons that I've discussed so far, I would say that my experience with an EV has been good. And this is in terms of saving money on road trips and the driving comfort. And I'm not just saying this. I have another diesel car in my garage, which has done over like 1,25,000 kilometers and I know what a car should have. So as a personal suggestion to anyone looking out to buy an EV, I would suggest that you choose something that suits your travel requirement. So let's say if you're traveling only within the city, then a less range car would do. But if you plan to travel to far away places, then definitely go for a long range EV. And apart from this, apart from the points that I've covered, if you have any questions on your mind, then you can definitely put those down in the comment section below and I'll answer them as soon as possible. So that's it for this one, guys. I hope you like this video. If you do, then give it a like and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you.